not just in my life, into the life of his people. Amen. I thank God for what he's doing in the church body. Because I believe this is the season of a turnaround. And the people want not to be faithful. But the Lord said, do not get disheartened. Do not get discouraged. Because God is with you. If God gave you the vision, he will give you the provision. And many times, what he would do, he had to separate. He had to pull people away. Because one thing I found about God, he multiplies by subtracting. That's right. And you have to understand, everybody that comes in your life is not always lifetime friends. Amen. You have seasonal friends in your life. Not just seasonal. You have seasonal members. You don't you put us up. And you can't get mad about it. I mean, I mean honestly, this is one thing that I, I've learned as a pastor and talking to my pastor friends. And what they would say, you know what, my members... <laughs> My members, I said, yo, what? Your members? Those are not your members, those are not your children, those are God people. Those are God disciples. If they decide to get up and leave, that's on them. I tell anybody, whenever it comes a point where you can no longer hear God's voice through my voice, move when you can hear God. It's not personal. This is about God's business. I don't want, I don't want you to be successful in whatever you do. It ain't gotta be a whole life or, or a true love ministry or amazing grace. It ain't gotta be it. Ain't gotta be it. And even as long as you're doing what God has called you, but make sure God is calling you. Because when, when, when God calls you, I'm gonna tell you how you know it's God. It's gonna be a fight. It's gonna be difficult. I've never seen, you know we have a new category at church now, right? You have members, you have visitors, but there's something between called visiting members. Yeah, they, they, they visit for two or three years. <laughs> they were tied, they would give their support, but they won't join because they've been hurt so long. I was in a, a meeting with a bunch of pastors. And it was somebody who was trying to put together a network. And every time the word organization came up, people fringe. Every time they heard, I'm not going to be a part of the organization. Because people have been hurt so bad by things in church that they're afraid to commit themselves to them. But I speak today to each and every one of you. When you're doing what God has called you to do, there are going to be distractions. Distractions are going to come. You have to learn how to be focused on the things of God. We got problems and they're real. You got situations and they're real. You got bills, you got children that don't act right, you have spouses that won't listen, you have all those type of issues. And we want to overly spiritualize everything. But it's only through the strength of God that there's some things that God is not going to do. What you can do, God is not going to do. You know they tell you, go get all your bills and bring them to the altar. And I'm going to pull these oil on it. And you just shout them out three times and go back to around seven times. And then after that, what you do? Pick them up and pay them. <laughs> See, y'all got those, you know, y'all got so much discernment that you don't even open up your bills anymore. You just to come to me, I know, y'all from Oklahoma, I know who that is. I'm like, but God is saying, this is the year to open up the bills. This is, this is the year of facing your enemy. See, see you want to be elevated. You want to go and do great exploits. But what you're doing is leaving room for the enemy to catch you. See, see, God give you a chance to get yourself together down here. See, it's hard back here. This side, get it together. Before you come here, make sure you get together. Because the demons that exist on this side of the pulpit, they, 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 they own all the newspapers and radio and they have access to internet. You want to make your name great? You can be great for one thing or another. So you got to make sure it's, it's the right thing. When the Bible talks about fulfilling offices in the Bible, the mistake we make, we look for gifts. Amen. We say they can preach. <laughs> they can sing. They can exalt. They can modulate. They can hoop. They can grab. They can run from it. They can do all that. But what about the character? If you look at the qualifications throughout the Bible, there's nothing to do with a gift. He never said, can you preach? He never said it. He talks about your character. He talks about a deacon full of the Holy Ghost, being a good report, being a husband of one wife. He talks about your character. And that's what we're missing in the body of Christ today. Your character. Distraction comes when temptation comes. Temptations that swell out to the enemy. One thing I found out, and I'm going to close on this, that you do not compete or compare to anyone. It's a slap in God's face. God has made you wonderful. He's made you complete. You and your big ears, your big nose, your short hair, your long hair, your, your big frame, your small frame, whatever way God has made you, that's the way you should be. But what we do, we compete and we compare with one another. We in the same body. 
right here, you know what this is? This is, this is God's church. This is not whole life. This is a building we just happen to be in. But this is God's body. Amen. And we're so busy battling denominations and reformation and why the world's going to hell. We fight over dollies and, and toes out and, and rings and earrings and makeup. And you no more saved than when you took that stuff off. Tell somebody, salvation is an inside job. Yeah. See, see, if you do all this on the outside and try to impress me, that's why we're not getting with it. You got to let God work on the inside. But there's some things about me. I say, God, evangelize my heart. Anything you find is not like you, make it right. Before I take on any responsibility, any duties, God, make me right. Don't let me die this way. Because the enemy's going to come. And he's going to distract me. But Nehemiah said, you know what? You pray, I work. Yes. You work, I pray. Yes. That's why you have to be careful who you hook up with. Yes. Call them people your prayer party. You have these, your own conferences on a sneak tip. It's like, and, and then you wonder where you pick all these spirits. Yes. You run from city to city, from conference to conference, trying to get delivered. And you can't get delivered at the altar. You have, it's the same God that's here that's in Texas. Yes. It's the same God that's in God. It's the same God. And see, we're looking for the big house. Let me tell you what anointing dwells. The anointing dwells at 196 Rosa Parks Boulevard on the pillar of partnership. Let me tell you something about that. Place. See, God said when you be faithful over a little thing, tell somebody this ain't nothing but a comma. I hope y'all catch it on the way home. This ain't nothing but a comma. See, see, we put parents where God put a comma. You say, Santa, oh, this is no, this ain't it. My God is better than this. My God, it's not that you're looking for, but I know when you know what God has put in you. See, see, I, there's not enough cribs in here to hold the babies. <laughs> it has nothing to do with your education. It has nothing to do with who you know, who's in your Rolodex. It has nothing to do with that. Not how many bishops and apostles and double apostles you know. It has nothing to do with that foolishness. It's about you have a relationship with God. I may not be your favorite, but I got favor with God. See, you may not be somebody's favorite preacher, but as long as you got favor with God, see, he will open up doors that could not have been open. You don't understand my story. That's how I love my son. I thank God for my mother. Where my sister's at? Now stand up. That's my baby sister. That's my sister. Amen. These are miracles. These are miracles because of what God. I was born in Washington, D.C. I'm talking about the bad side of Washington, D.C. I was raised in Newark, New Jersey. Oh, oh. Britain, Amen. Amen. First church, first, ended up in Patterson, New Jersey. That's a three-time loser. But God will make you a winner. Because yes. God knows he can trust you with trouble. Yes. See, he knew that what you went through wouldn't kill you. It would make you better. Yes. And that's why you can't look back over your life and be bitter. There's a work that you have to do that only you can do. Amen. Tell somebody, I was built for this. Built for this. See all the hell I went through, all the disappointment. You know when they start to write you off. See you thought I was dead. They left me on the side of the road for dead, brother. And, and they, I remember this brother right here as a young buck, out on the street with his goose down jacket. Amen. Jokers tried to rob him. He ran. They shot him. Guess what? Who knows a goose down jacket that catches bullets? Wow. See that was the Holy Ghost when he was in his forty. God said, I'm going to show you, I'm going to come, because there's a work in strength that I need you to do. And see, see, that's why when you look back over your life, you realize it wasn't that the enemy couldn't do it. It didn't want to kill you, but it couldn't kill you. See, you could all go deep if you wanted to. You could get you could get as high as you wanted to, as much as you tried to get high. God said, bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. Hallelujah. When that disease comes to enter your body, said, back up. So I want you to understand this, because not only Nehemiah had completed the work, but as Jesus was sitting on that cross, and he was, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he realized when he looked that cup, he said, wow, if it be thy will, take this pain away. If it be thy will, can we go another way? 
God, you know I love you. It don't take all that. God said, yes, it do. Because in order for me to get the oil out of it, I got the pressure to your praise. I'm going to share this. I'm going to close with it. I don't have all the closets. Amen. <laughs> and I'm going to help you with something. This is how you're going to win so Stop judging me. That's the first thing. I don't care what they look like. I don't care what they smell like. I don't care how they talk. I don't care how many. They got a tattoo down the middle of their face. They got a pierce through their nose. Don't judge them. Because you don't know their final destination. You don't know their final destination. You don't know why God allowed them. Because there's some people that you cannot reach. There's some people that you cannot reach. I, I commend True Love Ministries. Because they're down. There's a mission in Trenton. And it's a mission for it. Y'all seen the joy was the happiness was it movie with Will Smith. Pursue the happiness and the mission they went to. That's the mission they go to every Saturday. Remember it was snowing yesterday? They were out there in the snow with tents, serving soup, giving out clothes. That's 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 ministry. That's, that's ministry. Guess what? Nobody got an offering to give them, nobody got an honorary to give them. They got a plane ticket for them, they got a whole to put them in, but they sowing seeds. They sowing seeds. And you see, those are the people. When they see that I have nothing to offer you, but you're giving me everything. Those are the people that God will raise up. See, we want to get them already made. We want them in a three-piece suit, tailor-made suit. No, you keep your tailor-made suit and give me the broken heart. Amen. Give me the ones that people have given up on. They're going to take a little extra work, but when you get finished with it, it's going to be a great thing. Amen. Man, share this. We talked about homosexuality in the church. Don't, don't lose your joy. Because y'all scared of homosexuality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the church don't deal with it. Right. And, and what, what, what he said about it, he said, we look at that like a separate sin. No, sin is sin. You're the biggest liar on your side of the shit. You're the biggest liar. I wouldn't leave my pocket with my wall around you for nothing because you're a beef. Yeah. But you're going to talk about people because of their lifestyle. Not right, it's all sin. Right. But what I want you to understand is this. He said that the Bible says we are what? Born in sin. Mm -hmm. I know y'all would say they wasn't born that way, but guess what? What is it? Sin. I was born in sin. And I was what? Shame. Okay, what shame? My sin shaped who I became. Your behavior and how you act, the things you did, because there was a sinful nature in you from birth. Oh God, hallelujah. Then what was in your heart start to shape your decision and shape the things that you did. And guess what? I might have done what they said I did, but that's not who I am. And, and see, and that's what you have to, that's why you have to stop going by your own street name. Stop calling me Pookie and Run Row and all that stuff. Because that's, that's not my own street name. Follow me. I, sometimes I still be call him Tyler. I said, I can't call that brother Tyler. Because Tyler's dead. That's why Tyler's dead. And you got you to keep, you got to keep the, your club name and your, your, your five percent name. You are no longer earth. And knowledge and wisdom. So I got a new name because he, see, he just so see when Jesus signed the adoption papers, oh, he signed it in his blood. Yeah. And every time the enemy shows up, you need to pull out your ID because not just the enemy, but those people that say you would never amount to anything. See, see people always bring up your past to keep you from your future. They said, man, you won't be preaching. Don't let the internet, 
Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Don't let these things become the devil in your life. It's not the devil. You make it the devil. Your car can become the devil. Come on now. It could be a blessing, but if you drive your car and do something you should be doing, it becomes a weapon of mass destruction. It be, it, it, you can take something that God intended to be good, right. even with your gifts. Don't you let people blow you up and start inviting you everywhere. Every invitation is not for you. Amen. Every appointment, you don't just go in and everywhere. Because spirits are transferable. Come you come back here itching and scratching. We try to figure out what's wrong with you. We got to run up two week revival because you have messed around and hooked up with the wrong individual. And now you're confused. You don't even show what your name is anymore. I don't want to call. Uh, uh, I just missed up. See, all that could pass out of God. You're suffering from an identity crisis. Amen. You got to know who you are and who you are. And you can't forget who you are. Right. Let's stand all over this building. Let's give God some praise. I've been called to completion. Glory to what he has begun, he will finish. He will complete. And one thing I love about God, he says, my word will not return to you more. But it's going to what? Accomplish what it was sent to do. God's not going to make you do anything. The Bible says, if you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. You ain't got to shuck and job and lie and make up prophecies to get things to trust God. Is it always easy? No. There's going to be many times you can spend some time by yourself crying in the middle of the night. Say, God, I miss you. Talked to a preacher two weeks ago who said that his father's ministry was not going anywhere. He's seen it. And I'm going to tell you something. When things are not growing and you have a passion in you, it bothers you. Now I'm not talking about you just issue to, to grab a mic or get, try to get an offering some time. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about those who have a burden. When there's a burden in your soul, you have to fight through that stuff. And he said what happened was he had to leave his father's ministry. His father's organization, not his ministry, his organization. And let me tell you how, how people get this thing twisted. They talked about it. They accused him of stealing money. And when he would come back, they would speak to him. And then he would come back because he came and felt, he felt bad. He said, and they said, well, you need to repent because you was wrong. He said, five years later, as God started to bless him, because he went through a period where he said he walked like five miles high. He said, God, is this the price of obedience? See, obedience is going to cost you something, but it's going to be worth it all. They invited him back five years later to do one of their night in their conferences. He raised enough money in that one night to pay for the whole conference. Amen? But guess what? They didn't tell him. One of his friends that was still there told him. See, the enemy will bless you and then curse you behind your back. So that's why you can't always look for accolades and applause and that. You know, no. You got to know your assignment. You have to know what God has called you to. And is it always going to make sense? No. If anybody ever tell you it does, or, or that I got the full revelation, no, the, revela the, 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 the vision and the revelation of the vision, it evolves. As you turn the corner, you got to get a little bit more and a little bit more, and you walk in whatever God has called you to do. Amen? At this time, what we're going to do, we're going to start to call our candidates. As we begin this Decided to go forth in Jesus' name. We're really grateful to have a man of God over our lives. Today I wanted to talk to you about, I really just wanted to encourage you, trying to get you out of the mode of fearful to faithful. Amen. From fearful to faithful. That's not necessarily my my topic, but that's what's been in my spirit. And my topic this morning is still, is that the mission is still possible. The mission is still possible. No doubt we are, uh, got some things going on and we got half of the church encouraged, the other half somewhat encouraged, and then the other half discouraged, the other third. Uh, but I believe in that God 
is still able and that the mission is still possible. Amen. Go with me to the throne of God. Father, as we approach your throne, we thank you for an opportunity to share your word. We invite you to come in and increase as we decrease. Let your word fall on good ground, that it may be life changing, that we may be made whole, mind, body, and soul. Looking unto you, Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. We thank you now, God, that your word shall not return void. In Jesus' name, say amen. Amen. I am just so grateful. Uh, more importantly, I'm grateful for what God is doing and has done. I'm grateful for you, the people of God, who have made up in your mind to pursue God and the things of God. Amen. Tell your neighbor the mission is still possible. Amen. I want y'all to wake up in here. Wake up in here. Wake up in here. I'm not going to have you long. The mission is still possible. Now the scriptures that, that have dropped in my heart, uh, Galatians 6 and 9, and I want you to get this. Uh, uh, write it down. Commit it to memory. This may be a good time for you to take out your phones and not be on Facebook, but take it out and, and uh, bless his name. Uh, and stand up. Get this in your phone. It's, it's not. Amen. From, uh, Galatians 6 and 9. Because in order for us to make it, this has to be. Uh, application. It can't just be something you hear. It can't just be something you talk about. You just can't hear the word. You have to be doers of the word. It is not effect uh, for you to just hear what pastor and I teach and preach and what the elders teach, I mean ministers teach and preach and you not apply it to your life. The reason why you're not coming out of some things because you're hearing it but you're not applying it. So in order for you to apply it, you have to know it. So I'm giving you these scriptures and I want you to take them and put them around your neck all week, the rest of the year. Galatians 6 and 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Those of you that are doing something, be not weary. Because if you hold on, your season is coming. Yes. Philippians 4.13 Young adults especially, I want you to get this because you cannot be making the same mistakes at 40 that you were making at 20. So I need you to, I need you to get this. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Yes, we don't want this just to be a scripture. You get older and you say, oh, I remember when I was in Sunday school, we used to say that. I remember when Pastor Sylvia said that word. We want you to have this word in your heart that it become living and breathing in your life. Amen. And finally, Matthew 19 and 26, which is our theme for this year. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is impossible, but with God... All things are what? Possible. With God, all things are? Possible. With God, all things are? Possible. Say it like you mean it. With God, all things are? Possible. Amen. Put your hands together right there. Now, what's going to determine uh, your mission, whatever it is you've got before the Lord, uh, getting accomplished is how you handle these first three months. January, February, March. Stay with me. Good to see you, Tiffany. Amen. Uh, it's important, and, and I'm, 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 I'm gonna put it in natural terms. We are in our first trimester. In pregnancy, I don't like that word, but I have to, in order for you to get it, I have to say it. It just sounds like something I shouldn't say for the poor hands. <laughs> In pregnancy, we know that the first trimester is very crucial. 
Why? Because of the baby's growth and development. Right? right. So those of us that are carrying something, yes. expecting something, we are in a crucial time. Month one was January. And I'm gonna tell you what should have been taking place in January, in case you need, you know, to get on red bed rest or something. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, I'm gonna tell you what should have been taking place in order for you to see this thing through. What should have been taking place. Now we know that in uh, the first trimester, in the first month, the amniotic sac is a watertight sac that forms around the fertilized egg. It helps cushion the growing embryo throughout the pregnancy. What environment are you in? Or were you in when we declared on January 1st that this mission is possible? When we conceived the notion that we were carrying something and expecting something, what environment did you place yourself in? Were you in a safe environment? Were you in an environment that was conducive to healthy growth and development? Think about it, go back to January. Go back to January. Were you in an environment that was conducive to helping you see your mission through? You declared it, you knew what it was that you were trying to accomplish, and more importantly, you knew you were carrying something. And at some point, I cannot be expecting forever. So uh, was I in a sack that was protected, or was I just in that was in an environment? Ask your neighbor, what environment were you in? 